INSEAD will play a role. It will play a role in understanding the times in which we live, in describing, in analyzing, in anticipating the problems of those times, and in contributing to shape the world in 50 years. We're developing new programs, We're doing amazing things in things like Second Life, in social media, virtual teams. INSEAD is staying on the leading edge. We had invited President Sarkozy to be here today, and he couldn't make it. He knows INSEAD rather well. His brother is an alumnus. I read it with a loud voice. <laughs> Mesdames et Messieurs, l'esprit d'entreprise est français. Cela ne se sait pas assez, cela ne se dit pas assez, mais vous en êtes la preuve. Our theme for today is creating a new architecture for business and society, which way forward? We come together at a momentous time for INSEAD, 50 years, but also at a momentous and far less celebratory time for the global business community. Do we need more competition? Do we need to address these problems at a local level? Or do we need to address these problems at a global level? And if so, how do we do that? As an academic, my, my reaction, my first reaction is always first, identify things that we've seen before, things where we can go back in history and learn what is it that we did before to address these issues, did we get it right? And if not, how can we get it right this time? Versus things which are completely new, things that we have no idea how to deal with them. If I think about Europe, I would only say this. It's been a difficult period, but Europe always develops for the last 55 years. I've been working in it by taking a step which is beyond what the politicians understand and then making the model fit again. Coming from an emerging country and having been colonized by European countries, mostly, our cultural behavior is very much colored by the European culture. So deep in our root, we carry the same vision and mission. Yet, as uh, Lord Simon indicated, it has to be on a multilateral basis. You talk about the US using the market mechanism to stabilize the markets, but our friends from the Austrian School of Economics would decry the fact that all the Americans have done, and in fact, all the Europeans have done this last week, is heap debt upon debt to solve the problem of debt. Now, in what way is that a long-term solution to the crisis that we have created through excess leverage in the financial system, which seems to be undermining the basis of market economics. Yeah, but I mean, it's not the first time that uh, either individuals, companies, or states are confronted with heavy, heavy debt. And up to now, it's been a possibility for everyone to try and find a way out. Uh, of course, uh, the political and social dimension of dealing with a very heavy debt at the uh, state level is a problem. And it is all the art of policy to be able to uh, take the necessary steps, which is uh, reducing the expense, which means, of course, not allowing people to have the level of social protection they're used to, and, of course, probably uh, uh, wage, uh, wage uh, policy uh, to, be, to be strengthened. But all this is manageable. Which kind of created value do we relate remuneration? Okay, good. All right, so that's, it's more of a social function of capital type question rather than money per se. Antonio? Yeah, I mean, first, uh, I agree that analysts are paying too much and professors are not paying enough. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now, I mean, I think the point you raise is, is very, is, it's very complex. Uh, I mean, I think we've seen issues in the current crisis, which again are not new. Uh, I, if you read that report from 1934, it was all about excessive pay of investment bankers. It was about the fact that in the financial markets, you tend to end up with a very non-competitive environment. So some people get rents beyond what they should. Um, and I think from my point of view, I think there's no doubt that we have to have 
tougher financial regulation, and we need to think a lot about how we create incentives within financial institutions to make sure that some of these actors don't just play the game of like benefiting from so like the good outcomes and not getting punished enough for the bad outcomes. What's wrong with having government in the business if it works for these emerging economies that have a lot of state direction taking place in their economies? Well, keep in mind, most of the countries that are doing well, the emerging markets, are doing well because they're moving towards the concept of a market economy, right? Uh, I mean, China is growing at the rate that it's growing because it's getting closer to the model that advanced economies have had. Please, could you give our, uh, our panel the appropriate traditional applause for their work?